Well, if it isn't Nilu. Greetings, Mr. Jute. Do you still have any food that's ready to go? Of course I do. I've heard that Zubair Theater is hosting a celebration event, so I've reserved some food for you in advance. Although, it looks like you're going to need two more portions. <laughs> huh. Please allow me to introduce them. This is the Traveler, a very experienced adventurer. And this is Paimon. His super-reliable guide and helper. No, no, no. Paimon is... Uh, hold on. She got it completely right. Look, Traveler, she introduced Paimon correctly! <laughs> Don't underestimate Nilu. She always remembers every last little detail about everyone, even if it sounds completely trivial. She's also very brave. Just a little while ago, she saved my precious spices from the jaws of a sumter beast. Uh, don't think anything of it. I just help out when I can because everyone else takes such good care of me. Anyway, sorry to get off topic. We're in a bit of a hurry. Mr. Jute, did you say you didn't reserve enough food? <laughs> I was joking. Anyone who runs a business knows to keep some extra stock. After all, orders get changed all the time. Oh, that reminds me. It seems that these friends of yours aren't from here. Have they ever tried any delicious tachin? Ooh, what a fantastic idea! Mr. Jute, did you bake a batch recently? Tachin is a mixture of rice and meat that's baked into a cake-like shape. Mr. Jute adds special spices into his. Its aroma is just so wonderfully delicious. If you ever see kids crowding all around Mr. Jute's place, you know he's baking up a storm. <laughs> but is it really just for the kids? Don't you often follow them in, too? I... I just can't help myself. We're two peas in a pod! Who doesn't enjoy some good food? Wait here. I'll bring some over. Whoa, what a dish! It's sweet and sour and full of deliciousness! Paimon can't eat it fast enough! No matter how many times I eat it, it's still so delicious. <laughs> I wouldn't have offered it as a treat if I wasn't confident in the taste. I baked a lot just now, and it's all packaged and ready for you to take back to the theater. You made so much! Is it really okay to take them all? It was nothing. Making one serving or 100 servings is all the same to me. If anything, I should be thanking you for helping me clear my inventory. <laughs> Don't worry about it. What kind of person would I be if I made you pay for a treat? <laughs> Make sure you got everything. Feel free to come back anytime. I'm starting to understand how you got so many things. Yeah, everyone has their own way with words, and it's really hard to say no. Let's go to the next store. What's so great about snake iron toys anyway? Nilu, good timing. I have the textiles you ordered. If you took any longer, the sumter beasts might have gobbled them up. <laughs> you and your jokes. Sumter beasts won't eat those kinds of things, Mr. Offsheen. Jute said that some Sumter Beast ate his spices! Were they yours? 
Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, really sorry about that. Nilu, if it weren't for you, I would have lost half of my profits that month. Trying to pull anything out of a Sumter Beast's mouth is like playing a game of tug of war. So they really do eat anything, huh? Uh, what's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Come now. You know, Sumter Beasts sometimes eat not because they're hungry, but because they like gnawing on things. The textiles you ordered are highly durable and woven from the finest thread. So even if a Sumter Beast got snacky, it'd still have to chomp on it for a full day. You've tested this before? But of course! How else could I be so trustworthy? Well, that one time was an accident. I wouldn't dare experiment with such a precious product. True, it does sound like some good fabric. Ho ho, have I piqued your interest? If you want to buy some, now's a good time. Buy two bolts and get 20% off. Ooh, that's a pretty good discount. What do you think, Traveler? No thanks, Mr. Offsheen. You can't use that kind of tactic on her. Look, you've already sucked her in. Uh, tactic? So you mean everything he just said to Paimon was a lie? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. It's just that Mr. Offsheen is really good at spinning stories. A word from him, and you'll find yourself buying things you don't actually need. Mr. Zubair gave me a huge lecture the last time I bought too many things. Come on, don't look at me like that. All she got was a talking to from Zubair while I was nearly fed head first to the Sumter Beasts. My philosophy is that stories give value to merchandise. That's why my business started with such a boom. Our Nilu here is an extraordinarily good listener. Back then, she believed anything I said. After a while, I began to feel guilty selling things to her because of how happy she looked. Though she enjoyed the stories and I the Mora, I knew she didn't need to buy that much. Anyway, since then, I've come to realize two things. One, that stories should just be a means instead of an end. And two, that there's more to business than just selling goods. It's okay. We're all friends now. There's no need to dig up the past. Hmm, that reminds me. Some of the goods from my latest shipment aren't in the best condition. They're fine for general use, but my customers have high standards and I don't have the time or resources to find new buyers right now. Nilu, why don't you take them? Huh? No, 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 I can't do that. Just think of it as a favor for me, all right? The theater can use them for props and whatnot. It costs me Mora to store or ship, so I'm just losing money every day continuing to hold on to them. Even so, let me buy them at market value. Nah, these goods are hard movers. Besides, if I let you pay, wouldn't it mean that I'm just using stories to sell my goods again? Just take them. If you really feel that bad about it, give me some theater tickets later. Oh, yeah, you should also take some while you're at it. Adventurers are always in need of materials, right? Wow, even we get a share of this? Hurry and take it. Just looking at it all is giving me a headache. <laughs> Thanks for the huge favor. There's still one more store. Are you all right holding on to that much stuff? Paimon, why don't you lend a hand? He must be tired. Uh, if Paimon were to refuse, would you then think less of Paimon than even a Sumter Beast? About time, Nilu. Farhad here was snooping around your props. Please, I was only looking at them to get a better idea of what your new show may be about. Wouldn't spoiling yourself just ruin all the fun? Yeah, please wait for our official performance. Hmm, these two look familiar. I think I've seen them before. Ah, weren't they at the sub -Zeru's festival? Yeah, and they're coming to today's celebration too. Oh, the more folks, the barrier. I was actually just talking to Farhad about also stopping by tonight. Oh, yes, please do. I'm sure Miss Raycar and Miss Nadja would also love to have a chat with the two of you. 
We even prepared a small gift. Let me show it to you. Ta-da! It's a flower wreath. I really think we should wear some of these to give the event a more celebratory feel. Wow, it's beautiful. Did you make it? Farhad did most of the work. What a surprise, huh? He actually knows a lot about crafts. That is pretty surprising. Hey, why can't I have a little side hobby? I worked really hard on that. I know, I know. I watched you make it. I wasn't making fun of you. Oh, right. Why don't you also try some on? We've got some wreaths in your size. It fits perfectly. They're so pretty! Is there one that Paimon can wear? Unfortunately, we already gave out all the child-sized ones. I wasn't expecting the theater to invite such a... Fascinating guest. Fascinating? Huh. That sounds kind of weird, but Paimon will let it slide. Oh, you all sure got a lot of stuff there. Let me help you carry some. I'm a porter by trade, so this is what I'm best at. That'd be great! Please and thank you. But we have a pro now! Thanks for the help, Mr. Farhad. But let me make one thing clear first. Don't try to ask about what's in the new show. Otherwise, I may not be able to hold back Mr. Zubair this time. <laughs> You're so obvious that even Nilu saw right through you. Shut it. <sighs> Fine. It's not like I want to get on his bad side either. Including Hushang's things, though. We'll each need to carry a box if we want to move everything in one trip. Even my strength has its limits. Paimon looks like she doesn't want to, so I'll carry a little extra. <laughs> Although I may not appear super strong at first glance, I actually do a lot of strength training on the regular. Strength and balance are both really important for a dancer. No, no, let Paimon! Paimon will help carry things! The Traveler's right, Paimon shouldn't freeload. <laughs> Okay, Paimon? Paimon! Oh, that sure was a lot of stuff. Oh, looking forward to the event later. Thank you, Mr. Farhad. Thank you, Sumter Man. <sighs> Paimon's definitely going to eat it all back later. All right, I'll leave you all to it. See ya. Good thing we had Mr. Farhad with us, or else that would have taken way longer. Of course, <laughs> because everyone's working here together. We're all like neighbors, so we're always helping each other out. It's easy to forget that everyone's running a business. With this many freebies being thrown at you, you probably don't need to work. <laughs> I felt so guilty at first, like I always owed someone something. I was always thinking of ways to repay others. Later on, I realized that it's actually like what Mr. Offsheen said. By taking the freebies, I was helping everyone out and saving them money. When you order the wrong item, or make too much of something, sometimes the best way to maximize the value of those goods is to give them away. That's why there's no need to stress over the freebies. All of us repay others by helping them when they need it. Oh! actually makes a lot of sense. This has become our norm, and no one keeps track of the back and forth anymore. So really, don't worry about it. All right, I have to bring all this to Mr. Zubair and do a little bit of prep. Feel free to hang out here for a bit. It'd be nice if you could also get to know some other people at the theater. Nope, Mr. Zubair's really on top of everything. You two are our guests. So please, just relax and look forward to the celebration. Wow! The atmosphere here is so nice! Let's take a break and immerse ourselves in this warmth! Hey there! Hmm. Ah, a newcomer. Doesn't look too bright. Hey! Talk about judging a book by its cover! You, on the other hand... Hmm. You're a special one. 
how would you describe the concept of art? Mere curiosity is all. It makes no difference whether you answer or not. So that's what you think, hmm? Unremarkable. Better than an average person's thoughts, but nothing exceptional. Is art a product that we create and bring forth? Or is it a naturally existing resource? I, for one, believe it to be the latter. Uh, Paimon doesn't follow. I've been staying here for a long time. On occasion, I'd assist them in penning lines of dialogue, but most of my time I just stand back and watch. I prefer to abstain from writing as it spoils the viewing experience. The existence of the theater, of Nilu, and of humanity itself, all of these can be considered as forms of art. It is not some intangible construct beyond the horizon. How does that have anything to do with us? Let me ask you this. What do you think is the meaning of art? <laughs> I suppose that question was a little too difficult for you. To chance upon a spark of inspiration. I have been closely observing you, the players on the stage, and those watching in the audience. Art is already all around us. Hello! What? Who are you? You can't just go on the stage as you please. Ah, I see. Sorry for my overreaction. I'm just, uh, making a prop. No time for chit-chat. Is that embroidery? No. Well, yes, but not really. It's a prop. It's just, uh, some fabric. An ordinary piece of fabric that we use in a show. Uh, sorry. I really do need to focus and start working on it. What an oddball. Is prop making something to be that jumpy about? Oh well, it's none of our business. Hey there! I saw you two helping Nilu move some stuff. Are you two also here for the celebration event? You got it! My name is Raycar. Nadia and I are this theater's prop engineers. I also help out with some other tasks like housekeeping. The little ones causing a ruckus are my children, Soreen and Abi. I hope they aren't bothering you. They always get really excited every time we hold a celebration event. Yes, they are. Everyone here takes great care of them. There's good work here, the pay's always on time, and Nilu and the others will often volunteer to play with the kids. I'm quite content with this current way of life. Um, do you mean your life wasn't nearly as good before? <laughs> it's all right. It's all water under the bridge now. My husband and I were both adventurers, but he passed away from an accident. Material struggles can always be overcome, but ever since then, I haven't been able to spend much of my energy on anything else. But I still consider myself lucky. Mr. Zubair has helped me a lot, and the atmosphere here is tolerant and kind. Sorry for bringing up such sad memories. Oh, it's all right. I don't mind. Once the event starts, you'll be able to see for yourself the kind of atmosphere I was talking about. The event's probably about to start. Sorry for the wait. Preparations for the celebration are finally done. I'll call everyone over, and then we can start. Let us give you a hand. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe we really should have prepared a gift. Then we could also be a part of the exchange. As it is, all we can do is wait and watch. Um, maybe we shouldn't do this after all. I didn't do that great of a job, and who would even like it? Oh, don't think like that. Remember our promise? We're going to give everyone a pleasant surprise. And besides, you've never attended a celebration event before, so this will be a great opportunity. Everyone will love you. 
I'm still... not really sure about this. There's nothing to be worried about. Just take a step forward and give yourself a chance. There aren't any scary people here, right? Right. Huh. Alright. Maybe this will help. Everyone! Over here! Inaya has something great to tell you all! W wait Wait! I've already said that I'm not ready yet! Ah, uh, what should I say? Take it easy and relax. Deep breath, in and out. Once you've taken a long exhale, calmly tell everyone what you want to say. If you don't say anything, then all the hard work we put into embroidery practice would have gone to waste. Using it as a gift, though? It... So when Inaya was talking about making a prop, she was actually preparing a present. Yeah, it feels like she still doesn't really see herself as part of this community. But it looks like Milu's trying to ease her through. Actually, Inaya had prepared a special present for everyone before the celebration kicked off. Pipe down! The louder you all are, the more nervous she'll become! You've worked on it for so long, so have some confidence. Don't be afraid. You've got this! Uh... Is Mr. Zubair here? Sheikh Zubair, this is an urgent notice from the Academia. This celebration, or whatever it is, must stop at once! What a condescending guy! What's his deal? Since Uber Theater has long violated the Academia's policies and orders, we have decided to demolish it. As its manager, you must halt all operations and dismiss all staff members within 30 days, after which you will report to the Academia for further punishment. Why? Why force us to do this all of a sudden? Little girl, this is not the first time you've been issued a warning. I didn't hear anything about demolition the last time I asked, and now I suddenly only have 30 days? We have more shows planned, but it's impossible to do anything in just 30 days. How am I supposed to explain this to my customers and staff? That issue is of no concern to me, Mr. Zubair. You seem to understand the situation quite clearly. Perhaps you can reflect on the reasons why you have failed to prepare for the scenario in advance. Demolition? Why do they want to demolish this place? The Academia has never liked us, and they've never respected our work. To them, what we do is all a waste of time. This isn't the first time they've come by. They had asked us several times in the past to improve the quality of our performances, by only putting on shows they consider to be sufficiently intellectual. But our audience isn't the Academia. It's the people of the Grand Bazaar. If our shows are too difficult to understand, or too removed from everyday life, nobody would watch them anymore. Changing our content would not only mean turning our backs on our vision, it would also directly lead to the loss of our livelihoods. Yeah. The theater is very important to each and every one of us. Hmm. The way they're doing things is so scummy. But I also don't know how we can stop them. I do not wish to explain everything again from the beginning. Time is of the essence, so you should act with haste instead of asking frivolous questions. But none of us plan to accept this. Such an abrupt notice is contrary to established policy. Ask whoever you will. The answer will remain the same. We have already given you sufficient notice. Enough! Does your audacity know no limits, Father? Huh? Father? Their family? What academia? This is all because you don't like Zubair Theater. You're just using the academia's name to threaten us. Let me tell you. Even if you manage to tear down this place, nothing is going to change. You've always been awful. 
that even I never thought my father would sink this low. This is strictly business. It has nothing to do with where you are, what you do, or what you think. I hope you all have not been irrevocably blinded by folly. I will not waste more time on pointless arguments. Wrap everything up, and make preparations to shut down at once. Ah. Why is he always like that? This is quite the misfortune, but there's nothing we can do. That's it for today, everyone. Let's clean up. I'll go talk to them again tomorrow. <sighs> the storms that come out of the blue are always the hardest to deal with. Sorry. I invited you thinking this was going to be a happy occasion. I didn't know that things would turn out like this. There's no need to apologize, Nilu. No one could have seen this coming. Oh, Paimon just wishes she could have at least gotten to the food. Is what that guy said true? The Academia has already given you many warnings? Yeah, I guess you could say that. They've always seen us as being meaningless. Knowledge is king in Sumeru, and their pursuit of it leaves no room for the arts. But if that's all it is, there's also no reason to go so far as to demolish the theater. After Inaya ran away from home, I brought her here to Zubair Theater. She really talks about her family. All I know is that she didn't get along with them. I never expected it to blow up like this. If you did nothing wrong, then there's no reason to listen to the Academia, right? Who cares? Let's just take him in a fight! Ah, uh, that's true. I'll try to think of something. We can't just let everyone suffer in a perpetual state of fear and uncertainty. What to do? What to do? Can you pretend to shut down, but secretly continue to hold your shows somewhere else? Or we could go through a list of customers and try to see if anyone in there might be willing to help out. Uh, a debate? Huh. Well, scholars do love to use them to solve their problems, but how would that work in this case? Oh! If we can prove to Inaya's father that the Academia's position doesn't hold water, then they won't have a reason to demolish the theater! I see. Defeating him in a debate. It's a good idea, but which one of us could hope to win against a researcher? Huh? Me? No, 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 no. I'm the literal worst at arguments. I can't debate. Nilu, you are only so stressed out right now because you care so much about protecting the theater. I... This theater holds a special meaning in all of our hearts. It's irreplaceable. But I just don't know. Can I really take on such a huge responsibility? Paimon will help, too. You'll feel a lot more confident after doing some prep work. Believe in yourself. Thanks, you two. All right. I've decided. Even though I may fail, I'll do my very best for everyone's sake. That's our Nilu. We're rooting for you. Okay. Let's head back and tell everyone what we came up with. Trying to best the Academia in a debate is attempting the impossible. If you really want to try, I won't stop you. It's not like our situation can get any worse. I don't think it's entirely hopeless. To Sharif, Nilu's approach will come off as naive, but that kind of frankness is exactly what they lack the most. Things might turn out differently from what you expect. I am in favor of such a romantic feat. No playwright will turn down a compelling underdog story. Sure, in fiction, but I'm not sure how well that will translate to reality. Uh, I'm not saying that I don't support you, Nilu. If you need my help, just say the word. Anything is better than just standing aside and watching the theater get demolished. 
I'm also pitching in. Let's show the Academia that we have some fight in us. Thank you, everyone. I feel a lot less nervous with your support. Not to rain on your parade. But my father is a real hard guy to deal with. He's erudite, meticulous, demanding, and exceedingly familiar with rigorous logic. It'll be extremely difficult to beat him in a debate. You all already knew that. But you just didn't want to hurt Nilu's feelings. When all said and done, aren't you hurting her just the same? That's enough, Inaya! <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, I've ruined the mood. I just can't force myself to expect a positive outcome. Nilu shouldn't have to push herself for the sake of an impossible goal. Yeah! It's way too early to give up! You're right, Inaya. We're up against the Academia. Everyone knows that they're very powerful. Being skeptical might actually be the more normal response. But I still want to try. I'm reluctant to just let Zubair Theater go. And it's not just me. I think everyone else here feels the same way. If we're unhappy, we should speak up and let our voices be heard. Say what's on your mind, and do what you think should be done. If we fail after that, then at least we won't have any regrets. I mean, after all, the only thing we can control right now is our choice at this very moment. I understand what you're trying to say. I also have my own intense feelings of anger and regret. Then, could I trouble you to tell your father about our plan for a debate? You can still get in touch with your family, right? Yes, I can. Then, please help us pass on my request. I've never participated in a debate, and truth be told, I'm still not really confident in myself. But since we've decided on a debate, I'll do my best to prepare for it. I'll gather everyone's thoughts and let them be known to all during the debate. I, by myself, definitely don't have enough wisdom to beat your father. But what about the entire theater combined? Then we should have a chance, right? Right. That's right, Miss Nilu! Beat the bad guy! Justice will prevail! Make him eat dirt! <laughs> you two. We aren't getting into a fight, but thank you for your encouraging words. I'll do my best. Well said back there, Nilu. I felt that I might have said a bit too much. Anyway, we better start preparing now. First, let's see what everyone thinks about the situation. All right. <sighs> I've gained a whole new level of respect for you. Inaya was right. It's true that I couldn't bear to bring down Nilu. It wasn't out of pity or anything, though. I, I just felt like I didn't have the right to say anything. After all, Nilu was the one who bravely stepped up and proposed to fight back. I didn't have that kind of courage or initiative. I'd be a terrible person if I spoke badly of Nilu without doing anything to help. She knows better than any of us how difficult this path will be. Mr. Zubair, we're trying to put together a list of arguments that might be useful. Any ideas? It won't be difficult to explain our position. They're in the wrong, and they know it. I have meticulously managed this theater's affairs for years, and I have abided by every procedure and obtained every permit. I did all of that to protect ourselves if something like this were to occur. I didn't expect them to disregard the rules altogether. Yes, I know. But anyone who's staying at the theater is one of us. If I can't even protect the members of the theater from outside pressure, then I have failed in my duty as a manager. In summary, you need sufficient confidence and strict adherence to the rules. At least for now, they don't have the authority to demolish the theater. As long as you double down on that point and force them to concede it, you'll gain an advantage. All right. Got it. <sighs> I've seen many situations like this before. The Academia sure likes to get its nose into everyone's business. While you prepare for the debate, I will also prepare the theater for the potential aftermath. 
It's best to prepare for the worst outcome. Once you're done chatting, do me a favor and tell our customers that we're canceling all of our shows. Do we really have to? Right now, no one's in the right frame of mind to perform. I have to consider both our staff and our customers. This is the only way. Nilu, you are incredible. With your talent and youth, you had the least to lose out of all of us. And yet you were still the first to take a stand. I've never thought about leaving your theater, Mr. Zubair. I truly love this place, and I want to keep dancing here. I also want to keep dancing with everyone else. You're becoming more and more like her. Do your best. We'll do all that we can, and leave the rest to fate. Hey! My teacher. She was an excellent dancer, but she's retired now. If we have time later, I'd be happy to tell you more about her. When the day comes, I'll get my friends and the theater's customers to come and support Nilu. If anything goes wrong, I'll have them scream and shout and drown out whatever Sharif says. Uh, I can't do that? <sighs> Fine, I'll think of something else. Gained a whole Inaya was right. It wasn't out of after all. I'd be a terrible she knows better. I didn't expect you all to challenge the academia. And that reminded me of my younger years. Back then, I feared nothing and no one, and I was always charging into the most dangerous of places. I can't do things like that anymore, but those were some of the best times of my life. Sorry. If the theater really ends up getting demolished, then you, Soreen, and Abby will all... It's all right. There's no need to think such heavy thoughts. Even if the building gets demolished, its people will still all be here. Have faith in the resilience of an adventurer. We can always figure something out. But won't you have regrets if things just come to an abrupt end? It'd be like when you were forced to stop adventuring. Ah, oh, so that's what you were worrying about. Relax. I've had a lot of experience with regret. Things are painful at first, but as they say, time heals all wounds. Look at us now. Serene and Abi are happy. And Serene has also just passed his theater exam. He can start acting soon. He was thrilled because he can soon perform on the same stage as you. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for our past struggles. And would Serene have become a happier person? That's hard to say. Are you trying to make us feel better? Yes, but I truly do mean what I say. Being here at the theater has taught me an important lesson. The most important thing about an experience is how you choose to interpret it. I can choose to believe that my life ended with my husband's death. Or, I can choose to believe that it was a blessing in disguise for Serene and Abi. Similarly, even if this theater disappears, a new beginning might just be around the corner. Good and bad are all human-made concepts. It all depends on how we choose to see things. You have a point. Nilu, I know how important Zubair Theater is to you. But you don't have to be so nervous. We're all here with you. The theater won't go down so easily. Thank you, Miss Raycar. <laughs> no need to thank me. If anything, you inspired me with your bravery. You might have what it takes to become an excellent adventurer. Y you're too kind. All right, I gotta cheer up. I can't waste everyone's words of encouragement. <sighs> I feel a lot better. <laughs> Good. My children and I will be cheering you on at the debate. Paimon doesn't really want to talk to him. So, you've already developed some prejudices against me. And to think, I was just about to put forward a suggestion. Oh, Paimon will listen to that. <laughs> Although, I know not if you have a new answer to my previous question. 
Now seems like an appropriate time to revisit it. What do you think is the meaning of art? Oh, this again? We probably do need to tackle this question if we want to prove the value of the arts. I don't know how to explain it, but all I know is that when my performance makes the audience happy, I also become very happy. Does that count as a meaning? You answered him so seriously. Careful, Nilu, this guy's ramblings never make any sense. No, no. Nilu's answer far surpasses yours. And it is close to my own. The meaning of art comes not from its creators, but from its audience. In other words, only art that can be appreciated by others will impart its essence and value upon the minds of its audience. This is something that the Academia can never understand. I once pursued the mastery of art, much like how a researcher would chase wisdom and knowledge. However, the more of a connoisseur I became, the less I felt I understood. I began to question what it truly meant for art to be understood at all. I found that I could comprehend even the most complex and sophisticated of works, and yet somehow that provided me with little solace. I remained even perplexed about this conundrum until I visited this theater and watched one of Nilu's performances. It was that life-changing? Everyone here had a joyous part in the overall experience. The actors upon the stage basked in the love of their audience, while those in the house immersed themselves in the wondrous ambiance. In all honesty, from a purely critical point of view, the performances here are exceedingly average. Hey, don't say something like that. But what bewildered me was how despite the performance's middling quality, they captivated their whole audience. They captivated even me. I realized then that I had walked the wrong road. The mastery of art was never what I truly wanted. I left the so-called frontiers of artistic research and came to this theater. For this is where I can finally find what I seek. Art will no longer be a castle in the sky. Whether it be inspiring or entertaining, art must be appreciated by others to confer value. If art cannot accomplish that, then it is meaningless. When you put it that way, Mr. Zubair and I refuse to follow the Academia's orders to change our shows for a similar reason. To put it simply, we were afraid that our shows would lose their meaning if people couldn't understand them. I once stood in the spotlight, but I relinquished fame and acclaim for the freedom I enjoy today. I care not for where my feet may take me next, but Nilu, you need to remember one thing. You already stand upon the finest stage there is, and that is a rare gift that should never be taken for granted. You cannot give it up, not even to the Academia. I understand. Thank you for your words of encouragement, Mr. Kasani. Dust the cobwebs away from the eyes of those scholars. You really seem to care a lot about the theater. Once you get to know him, you'll realize that he's actually a big softy at heart. You're here. Is the theater actually closing? He's been worried sick for a while now. He wouldn't stop talking the whole way back. Hey, you two. Uh, what exactly happened? Did someone come down from the academia? Yes. He told us that we have to shut down the theater within 30 days, and that it's going to be demolished. What the heck? That came with no warning. <sighs> They're messing with us again. Don't tell me you'll have to listen to him. Come on. You know the answer to that. Yeah, it is a direct order from the Academia. There's no need to worry, though. I'm preparing for a public debate with the Academia. If I win, we might be able to overturn things and change their minds. Really? That's terrific. You have my full support, no doubt about that. Mine too! 
So what was their excuse, anyway? They still not a fan of the theater's programs? Yeah, something like that. Good thing they have the power to make rash decisions about things they don't even understand, huh? Yeah, they need to touch more grass, not books. Exactly. They want to look down on us? <laughs> we'll look down on them first. Don't worry. Everyone here has your back. The Academia's recklessness won't get them any praise. Right. They might think that some forms of knowledge are more valuable than others, but everyone can equally appreciate art. If they don't believe that, send them my way. I got them beat on this subject. Maybe you can prepare some questions on the details of dance performance to make things harder for them at the debate. Hmm. Sounds like a good idea. Maybe that's something I should do. Ignore him. He's joking. Just do things your way. No matter what, we will always support you. Thank you all so much. Your understanding and support make me feel a lot better. There are always more solutions than problems. If you need help during the debate, just shout and the entire Grand Bazaar will be at your beck and call. Huh. Gotta show them who has the people's support. I feel like the pieces are starting to fall into place. Let's head back to the theater and organize our thoughts. Sounds good! Inaya should also be back soon. Abi, Have you seen Miss Inaya? No, Miss Nilo. Miss Inaya isn't back yet. Wasn't she just passing on a message? Does she really need this much time? Huh? Oh no! Traveler! I'm on! I think I messed up big time! What if Inaya never planned to come back? What? It's just a gut feeling, but... Knowing her, she probably feels like she's completely responsible for what happened. She probably thinks that all of this happened because she was staying here. Oh, right. As soon as her father showed up, she said that her father was targeting her. So she's felt like that this whole time. She has a long-standing conflict with her father. That's why she ran away from home. She doesn't think that we can win the debate. And she doesn't want to implicate us. So she thought leaving was the best thing to do. Mm-hmm. And then she just quietly left afterward. Exactly. She's being too pessimistic. How will you know if you don't try? Anyway, first things first. We have to get her back. But where should we start? Sumeru is huge! I think I might know. Let's start by looking outside the city. Before I brought her to Zubair Theater, she was staying at a remote campsite. She got a fever from drinking unclean water, so I carried her back. If she has nowhere else to go after leaving the theater, she might go back and strike out on her own again. Then let's go take a look! Yes, let's hurry! <laughs> that someone had stayed here very recently. But we can't confirm if it was Inaya or not. Let's take a look around first. <sighs> Did you hear that? I heard it too. Let's investigate. Stay back! It's Inaya! She's being attacked by wild animals! 
Thank you. There weren't so many big animals in this area before. They chased after me for a long time. Sorry. I'm causing trouble for you again. Why did you leave by yourself? You really don't think we have a chance at winning the debate? No. I just thought it would take too much effort. Everything happened because of me. If I'm gone, then the situation will resolve itself. Yeah! Everyone's working together towards a happier ending. No one should be singled out for blame. It's all right if it's me. As long as the theater won't get demolished. You guys are the kindest people I've ever met. You shouldn't suffer so much because of me. Listen to me, Inaya. Even if you were the reason that all of this happened, no one would blame you. Mr. Zubair said that you're one of us, so that means we will protect you. No matter what happens, we'll stand as one. Nilu. There will always be a victim. Whether it's me, or the theater. You can't eat your cake and have it too. You can't win a debate against the Academia. Especially since your opponent will be my father. My father is an extremely demanding man. He's always wanted me to become an exceptional researcher and his academic successor. I tried my best to meet his expectations and did everything I could, but he still wasn't satisfied. Or rather, he had just never been satisfied with me. I'm no genius. But whenever he berated me, it was always as if he was asking me, why aren't you a genius? Yeah, like I'd know. So that's why you ran away from home? At first, I thought the father would slowly come to terms with reality. But he, he just wouldn't stop berating me. For one exam, I earned the third highest score. I thought that all my hard work had finally paid off. And that I could finally make father feel some modicum of joy. I even used the embroidery skills I learned at school to make a commemorative gift for him. I thought, even this daughter can make her father happy sometimes. Right? I see. When we were embroidering your gift before, I didn't feel like you were new at it. Yeah. Sorry for not bringing it up. These are not pleasant memories for me. I was tired of him yelling at me every day. All I wanted was to see him smile at me, but... He was more angry than ever before once I'd given him my embroidery and told him my score. He flung my present to the side. You think you should be proud of third place? Reflects on why you weren't first. I forgot how long I'd cried for. I only remember my parents arguing. My mother also thought he went overboard. They argued for such a long time. My father eventually stormed out and slammed the door behind him. I didn't get a single sentence of apology. Or any words of comfort. I've completely given up. We're destined to never understand each other. How horrible! I don't think you can beat him in a debate. Because he doesn't even understand what kind of place a theater is. He can never understand the relationship performers have with their audience. His life is devoid of camaraderie or friendship. He just wants everything to happen according to his wishes. As if the world revolves around him. What we cherish, our little place in this world, means nothing to him. It sounds like your past has had a huge impact on you. I understand now, Inaya. But when we were preparing for the debate, I heard something quite wise. Maybe it'll help you. Art must first be appreciated by others to confer value. Mr. Zubair has been meticulously managing the theater. Everything checks out. 
Mr. Zubair The most important thing about an experience is how you choose to interpret it. Everyone is free to appreciate art. No form of art is inherently superior. Mr. Zubair has been metic- Art must first- Miss Raycar has gone through a lot in her life, but she told us that she's very happy to live at the theater now. Although she ran into misfortune, it led her down a new path in life. She sees that as a blessing. She told me that the most important thing about an experience is how you choose to interpret it. Interpret it? I can sympathize with your unhappiness at home, but after you ran away, you ended up at the theater and became one of us. Those unhappy experiences allowed you to really cherish your bonds with everyone, and also gave you the opportunity to become friends with us. Don't let your past suffering keep you from the new life that you've worked so hard to find. Oh... Let the past stay in the past. When I ran away from home, I swore that I would leave my family conflicts behind. But you're right. All I'm doing now is falling right back into it. Maybe you'll disappoint him, but that doesn't matter. You have a new future waiting for you. Don't let go of the answer you've worked so hard to find. That's right. If we put our heads together, there's bound to be a way. You're right. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm not trying to meet his expectations. So why should I give up because of him? I can't afford to lose anything more. We have to win. The debate will not only protect Zubair Theater, but also allow me to settle things with Father. That's the spirit! Let's go. I'll tell my father about the debate. I know him very well. Even if he looks down on us, I know how to make him accept. All right, let's go.